Okay, hey, uh, welcome to this tutorial. So this tutorial is gonna be a little different than the other tutorials that I've done. Um, this tutorial is actually part two in a two part series where a different YouTuber actually did part one. And so we worked together to create this mix and match card game that is Halloween based. And so mix or match is a play on trick or treat, I think. And so what we did was he went in and he did all the CSS and the HTML and he has a tutorial for that, which I'll link in the description below. And I have this tutorial, which is gonna be putting the JavaScript side in and making it functional to where you can actually play the game. And he did a really great job of making this game look really good. So I'd highly recommend watching his end of the tutorial. However, if you're only in it for the JavaScript side, I can, I'm going to put in the description below a link to the repository so you can download the code the way it is here and you can follow along with me there. Um, that was the first thing I wanted to address. The second thing I wanted to address is either way, um, if you don't have the assets folder, um, you're gonna, I'm gonna put a link in the description to where you can download the audio and all of that that you're gonna need, but you should already have it if you followed his side of the tutorial. Um, this is all gonna be in the repository. So yeah, you're gonna need the audio, the cursors, the fonts and the images, all of that in order to make it look the way that we have it over here. I'm going to take this script.js file that I have here and I'm actually gonna move it to the recycle bin so we can start fresh together. And I think that's everything I wanted to go over before we get started here. But the idea of the game is basically, it's just gonna a card matching game. You know, you flip one card and then you try to find the other card that matches, it has the same pattern on it. And then if you match it, they stay face up and your goal is to get all of the cards matched. And so in our case here, we're gonna have a timer and we're gonna give it some time and it's gonna count down. And if it gets to zero, you lose. And we're also gonna count your flips. So every time you flip a card, it's going to iterate this flips number here. So it's kind of like a score. So you're gonna to wanna to get the lowest amount of flips with the highest amount of time to get a good a good score. Um, so that is everything. Let's go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're going to be loading the JavaScript file that we're about to create. So let's go ahead and do that. So in your header tag, in your HTML file, go ahead and put the script tags in, put a source, and then in there you're gonna to wanna to put script.js because that's what we're gonna call the file. And then here we're gonna put async. And what that means is it's gonna tell HTML to load this JavaScript file at the same time as the index.html file. So it's gonna load it asynchronously, asynchronously. So what we're gonna to have to do is since we want all of the content inside of this HTML file to be loaded before any JavaScript gets run whatsoever, we're gonna to have to put a couple lines of JavaScript in there that basically says, if the page hasn't loaded yet, wait for the page to load before we run the code. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's create a new file called script.js. And in here, we're gonna go ahead and put a, um, an if statement. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put if, and then inside of this, we're gonna say document.readyState. And document.readyState is going to be the state of its uh, loading process, essentially. So if that is equal to loading, then we know that the page has not yet loaded. So in here, we're just going to say uh, document .add event listener, and we're gonna give it the event called DOM. What is it? Uh, DOM content uh, loaded, okay? So what that means is once the DOM content has loaded, once everything inside of the HTML file has loaded, it's going to call whatever function we give it here. And in our case, we're gonna put ready, and that's gonna be the function that we're about to uh, create that initializes the whole program. And then we're gonna say else, just go ahead and call ready at that point. Now, what we're saying here is if the HTML page has not finished loading, then put an event listener on the DOM that says when it is loaded, call ready. However, if not, then we know it's already loaded. So go ahead and call ready. Let's go ahead and create the ready function. Okay, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna have um, a couple variables and we're gonna go through, we're gonna grab all the overlays. Like for instance, this is an overlay. We have three overlays total. We have the click to start overlay that happens when you first load the page. We have the game over overlay, which you see when the time runs out. And we have the victory overlay, which happens when you, when you beat the game essentially. So we wanna grab all those overlays from the DOM and we also wanna grab the cards, okay? So let's go ahead and grab those really quick. Now what we're gonna do is when you do document, so document.getElements by class name, and by the way, the class name is overlay text for the overlay overlays. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this side panel here so you guys can see the whole thing. This right here, what this does is it actually returns an HTML collection. It's not 
exactly an array. It's an HTML collection. And since it's an HTML collection, it doesn't have access to the JavaScript array functions that are really convenient. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a function called array.from. And what that does is whatever you give it, it's going to try to create array, an array from that. And in our case, it can create an array very easily from an HTML collection. So now overlays is literally just an array of these elements. Then we're going to do the same thing with cards here. Okay. So we're going to say array dot from, sorry about that one. Um, array dot from document dot get elements by class name. And the class name here is card. Okay. So now we have all the overlays and the cards. So what do we want to do? We want to loop over all of these and add click event listeners to these. So let's go ahead and start with the overlays. Overlays. And here's what I was talking about with the um, array functions. Since we're dealing with uh, JavaScript arrays, there's an ar array function called for each. And what we're going to do is we're going to call for each. Now what that does is it takes a function that you want to get called for every item in the array. And so in our case, um, for each overlay, we're going to do what is ever what is between these braces here. And what we want to do is we want to say for each overlay, we want to add an event listener of type click. And we're going to do everything in between these braces whenever you click on an overlay. And in our case, we're going to say overlay dot class list dot remove visible and see visible is the class that's given to this so that it's visible to the person that's playing the game currently. So if I save this and refresh, I should be able to click this and it disappears as we'd expect. However, at this point, we also want to initialize the game. However, we're going to wait to do that. So I'm going to put a comment here and say um, game dot start game because that is how we're going to do that. And we'll get to that very shortly. So we want to go ahead and add our cards event functions really quick. So for each card, and I'm just going to backspace this to keep it consistent. So for each, oops, for each card, we want to add an event listener of type click. And for each click that happens on a card, we're just going to do game dot flip card. And we're going to end up passing the card itself. So we have access to the card since uh, we're doing for each. So we're going to pass that card to the flip card function once we get there. So now that we're this far, um, I think it's a good time to go ahead and explain that um, this is going to be object oriented. So if you have experience with object oriented design patterns, great, this tutorial will be perfect for you. If you don't, don't worry, you're, you're going to learn a lot in this tutorial about object oriented programming. So I would go ahead and watch it regardless. So I'm actually going to move this if statement to the bottom just to get it out of the way. And so what we're going to start with, I think the best way to start with this is to just go ahead and create the mix or match and the audio controller classes that we're going to be using throughout the tutorial. So let's start with the audio controller. So what I'm doing here is I'm declaring a class called audio controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a constructor and a constructor is called once you create an instance of the object. So if I'm down here and I say, let a C equal new audio controller. Oops. That creation of uh, the new audio controller, and I'm, I'm actually going to just say audio controller, we'll go ahead and create it. Um, that's what we will call it. The variable audio controller is an instance of this class. And so we can reference this audio controller as if it were um, just one of, you know, there could be many audio controllers out there, but this one has its own properties and its own functions that are unique to itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and in the constructor that's, that gets called when you, as soon as you create a new one and in here, we're going to use this. And what this means is any, so, I'll give you an example. So this dot BG music. So that BG music stands for background music. When we set this variable, the this means that the variable belongs to that particular object. So this means when I call audio controller dot BG music, that's going to be different than say, um, AC's BG music. It's going to be, it can be a different value because this is possessive and it means that that belongs to this particular instance of this class. So the class is essentially a blueprint 
for the objects that you are creating. So hopefully that makes sense. So now we have this .bg music equals new. We're going to create a new audio object. And in here, we're going to put a path to the audio file that we're going to be using for the background music. In our case, it's assets slash audio slash creepy dot mp3. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this particular portion of it since we're going to be copying our um, having multiple sounds and it's all in the same directory. So let's go ahead and get all of the sounds declared in the constructor along with any other properties that we may need for this class. So let's go ahead and do that. This dot blip sound is equal to new audio. And then in here, I'm going to paste that in the it's called flip dot wave. And then I'm actually going to copy this whole entire thing because it would make it even faster. <laughs> this dot match sound. And then in here, it's just match dot wave. And then again, this dot victory, whoops, victory sound um, is going to be equal to, and then in here, it's as you probably have guessed, victory dot wave. And then we're going to do this dot game over sound. And then that is, as you guessed, game over, but we're going to use a lowercase uh, o because that's the name of the file. Uh, then we're going to say this dot bg music is equal to, oh, and actually, sorry, this dot bg music dot volume is equal to 0 0.5 because the, the background music is really loud, the sound that I got. And we don't want it to just be like really loud. We want to still be able to hear the sound effects, you know, and just not be bothersome. So what we're doing here is if we set the volume equal to zero, it would be muted. And if it was one, it would be full blast. So 0 0.5 is literally putting the volume halfway up. So we're going to say this dot bg music dot loop is going to be equal to true so that the music loops and doesn't just stop abruptly while they're playing then we are going to create some functions. And so the way that this works is, let's go ahead and give an example. So this.bgmusic.play. So what we're gonna say here is if we ever, if we have this audio controller down here and we say audio controller dot start music, then it's gonna call this function. And in our case, this function calls this statement, which is a function. And it's saying this.bgmusic.play. So if I save this and refresh, didn't quite get the, uh, that's because, sorry, uh, we got to put that inside of, let's put it inside of the ready function. Actually, let's put it, let's put it where it's going to go. Well, kind of, it's kind of going to go here. Don't, don't get too ahead of yourselves. It's kind of going to go here. We're going to move it, but so as you can see, that's how that works. So let's refresh it, get out of the way. So we're actually going to put that functionality inside of the mixer match class. So I'm just going to cut that out for now. And let's finish the uh, audio controller class. I just wanted to demonstrate that really quick. So stop music, as you can guess, is going to stop the music, but there is no stop function with the audio object in JavaScript. So we have to pause it and say the current time oops, is equal to zero. So we're pausing it and then putting the time back to zero so that it restarts when we play it again. Then we're going to flip. Uh, this dot flip sound dot play. Then we're gonna do match this dot match sound dot play. And then I keep doing that. Uh, we're gonna have a victory function which just calls this dot victory dot play. But above that, we actually want to go ahead and stop the background music. So when we win, the background music stops, and then we get this victory sound. Um, so we're gonna say this dot stop music. Then under that, we're gonna say game over, and we're gonna say this dot stop music, and this dot game over sound dot play. Okay, so let's see what does the what do those sound like? So the the match, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the victory sound. Oops, let's open it in, in the explorer here. The victory sound, the game over sound. So it sounds very much like a video game. Okay, cool. So those are that is our entire audio controller class. We are done with that. So what we're gonna wanna go ahead and do is create the uh, mix or match class. So we're gonna start creating it. We're gonna kinda go back and forth at this point, okay? Because I kinda wanna demonstrate some things as I talk about them. So class, mix, or match. And then 
we're going to want to have a constructor. And then inside of this constructor, we're actually going to put two parameters. And I'll show you how the parameters work. It's just as you would probably think they do. We're going to have total time and cards. And so when we say new, this is just an example, so I'm going to put it in the comment, new uh, mix or match, you know, we would pass 100 seconds and, um, you know, a cards array, okay? And then that would appear here. So I'm actually going to call this cards array. because Well, no, I'll call this cards and we'll call the property itself cards array. So this dot cards array is equal to cards. This dot total time, we're going to set that equal to total time. So at this point, there are properties of this object that are set from the constructor. And those are just cards array and total time. The rest of these properties are going to be set dynamically. So this dot cards or card to check is going to be equal to null. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to wait on this one. We're going to have a function called start game and we're going to put that in there. So back to the constructor, we're going to um, we're going to put in this dot time remaining and we're going to set that equal to total time. And that's going to be the, the countdown time. So time remaining is whatever the time remaining is at any point given throughout the, the game. And when you first start the game, it's going to be equal to the total amount of time, which is in our case, it's going to be 100 seconds, but you can actually set that to whatever you'd like. So this, oops, this dot timer is actually going to be at the actual timer itself, that 100 right there, that value, we're going to pull that from the DOM. So it's going to be document dot get element by ID. And then in here, we're going to want to, that's called time remaining. So that's convenient. This dot ticker is going to be document dot get element by ID. And that is called flips. And that is literally this right here, this value. So we're going to tick it up every single time you flip a card. Okay, so let's go ahead and say this dot audio controller. We don't want the capital A. This dot audio controller uh, is gonna be equal to new audio controller. Okay, so now we have the audio controller that belongs to this particular game object. Awesome. So I think, is there anything else we, well, let's go ahead and set the properties that we're gonna to wanna to set once the game starts. And the reason why we're putting these inside of this function is because when you create the new mix or match game object, this stuff gets called, but this will get called more times than the constructor. This only gets called once you write this in code and you create a new object. This, we can call it by just saying, you know, mix or match dot start game. And we're going to call this multiple times, specifically just to give you an idea, um, if the game ends and it's a game over or victory and you click play again, start game will get called again. And so these are the, the properties that we're going to want to set whenever that happens. So um, in here, we're going to reset this dot total clicks. We're going to set, whoops, we're going to set, sorry, this dot total clicks to be equal to zero. And then we're going to say this dot time remaining is equal to this dot total time. Am I doing this right? Yep. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want the time to reset each time we uh, start a new game. All right. So we're also going to have this dot matched cards array. That's going to start off as empty. And we're going to obviously, like it sounds, we're going to put all of the matched cards that we get while we're playing the game into that array. And we're going to be using that to check against the total cards array to see if we have a victory or not. And then we're also going to have a this dot busy. And we're going to start it off by saying it is true because we're gonna put false once we um, start the game. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So this dot busy, it, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up creating a function, which, you know what, I'm actually gonna go ahead and create right this second. Um, well, no, I'm not. Well, okay, sorry, <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, let's go ahead and create it, can flip card. So sometimes we're gonna to wanna to check um, whether or not the user is allowed to flip a card. And there's three different scenarios where they're not gonna be allowed to flip a card. One of the scenarios is if this.busy is equal to true. This.busy is gonna be used to kind of say like, hey, an animation is happening right now or something along those lines. So, um, or you know something like that. So you're not allowed to click on anything until this is done. So that's what this.busy is gonna represent. The second case is if you're clicking on a card, 
that is already a matched card. You don't want to click. You don't want to let the person click on a card that's already a matched card and then run this function. You know the the flip card function. We don't want that. Um, and we also don't want to. Uh, uh, this third case, I better explain one more thing real quick. So remember that we're on the third case here. The I have to explain this variable really quick. So this dot card to check. When you first start the game, none of the cards are flipped, and when you click one, it flips that becomes card to check because now you're trying to check other cards. You're, you're going to click another card and then it's going to check it and see if it's the same as that card. Then both cards are going to flip back over and then now you have no card to check. So card to check is back to being null. So what we're going to say is if the card that you click is the card to check, we also don't want to let you flip that card because it's already flipped and it's kind of like a card that's going to sit there and you're trying to find another card that matches it. So we don't want the user to be able to, to click that card either. So those are the three cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to say um, return not this.busy, and I'll explain why we're doing this in a minute. Um, I think the best way to explain how this works if you're kind of new is I'm going to put these in parentheses, and then we're going to say and not this.matchedCards.includes card and um, card does not equal this dot card to check. So these are the three cases I was just talking about. So what this is, what this evaluates to, um, which you should know from basic JavaScript and basic programming experience, is that this creates a boolean. If you create an if statement and you say if all of this, this would either return true or false. So what we're saying here is we're actually flipping this value. So this dot busy. What we're saying is if this dot busy is false and this dot match cards dot does not include card because we have this um, unary operator here. So if card is not in this dot match dot cards and card does not equal this dot card to check, that is going to evaluate to um, to be false. <laughs> so I, I think I said that right. No, I'm sorry. If all three of those values are false, then it's actually going to return true because the statement itself is true. So don't let that logic kind of confuse you. So again, if not this.busy and not this.matchedCards.include cards, <laughs> um, and card does not equal card to check, this will become true and it will return true. If any of these are true, then what's going to happen is it's going to return false because all three statements have to be false in order for it to be true. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little tr uh, tricky because it's backwards. But so what we're saying is if this returns true, then they can flip the card. So we are going to keep that in mind when we create the flip card function that we're about to create right now. And by the way, we're going to just have this return true for now so that we can demonstrate the card flipping. So let's go ahead and create the flip card function. And then it's going to take a card, the one that's clicked, and let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create an instance of this object. So let's say let game equal new mix or match. And then I'm going to pass 100 to it so that you can see it's 100 seconds. And then we are going to um, pass it cards. Whoops, cards. <laughs> All right. So now we have that. And then what we're going to do is click. We're going to have game.startgame whenever you click on the overlay. And then whenever you click on a card, we're going to call game.flip card, which we are coding right now. So the flip card function is going to be a very simple function. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check whether or not they can flip a card. So if this dot can flip card, pass card, if you can flip the card, then we're going to do all this stuff. We're going to say this dot audio controller dot flip. Okay. And then might as well test that out. See if we get the clip flip sound. Yep, we get the flip sound. Cool. So that works. And then let's say um, this dot total clicks plus plus. So we're iterating the total click. So when you click on one and it actually, if you're allowed to flip it, that means we are flipping it and we can go ahead and assume that the total clicks needs to go ahead and be ticked up. And so since we're doing that, we need to say this dot ticker dot enter HTML, or actually let's do enter text to be semantically correct. 
um, this dot total clicks. So we are actually updating the flips count here to be the current value of that. So let's make sure that works. <laughs> Not a number. Um, do, 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 why is that? So the reason why is because this dot start game is not a function. Oh, I spelled it wrong. There we go. I put an extra S in there for some reason. There we go. So now we're getting, it's counting up each time I click it. Okay, great. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and flip the card. And so Web Dev Simplified created a class called Visible, and all you have to do is give it the Visible class, and it has a transform, or actually, it's a it's a it's an animation where it flips 360 degree or 180 degrees around, and you can see the card at that point. So we're going to want to go ahead and say card dot class list dot add. We want to go ahead. No, we don't want that. Uh, we want to go ahead and give it the Visible class. So let's see that in action. Cool. So as you can see, this is the current order of the cards, but we want them to be shuffled, right? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is down here, we're gonna end up creating an if statement. So I'm just gonna put that there so I can remember to do that. <laughs> um, so we're gonna put an if statement at the end here that's gonna say, you know, should we check for a match or should we not check for a match and all that good stuff. We'll do that in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and shuffle the cards because that's gonna be a fun part. It's gonna be fun, oh yeah. Can't wait. It's supposed to shuffle cards. And it's going to take the entire cards array. Go ahead and pass it to it. Um, which, you know what, actually, let's let's not do that. Let's just make it a static function. Or a function that doesn't take a, a uh, an argument, I mean. So in here, we're going to do a for loop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the Fisher-Yates shuffle, which is an algorithm created by two guys, Fisher and Yates. That is basically a very efficient, fast um, shuffling algorithm. There's two ways to do it, but we're going to do it this way because it's the first one, and why not? <laughs> um, and the way that it works is here's some pseudocode. I'm going to talk you through it, and then we're going to write it in JavaScript. So this is pseudocode. So it says, to shuffle an array of n elements, so n being the number of elements, from indices 0 to n minus 1, n minus 1 because the array starts at 0, and it's always the length of the array minus 1, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to say for i from the very last element down all the way to the first element. So in other words, we're looping backwards through the array. We're going to create for each iteration, we're going to create a random integer such that the random integer is greater than or equal to zero and is also less than or equal to i, which is what we're using to iterate through the array. And then we're going to exchange the random item in the array with the one that we're currently on. And we're just gonna switch them. And then that is the shuffling algorithm. And we're gonna implement that in JavaScript. All right, let's do it. Let i equals cards array dot length. Whoops. Yeah, make sure you have the this in there. Um, so let i equal the length of the array minus one, right? Then we're gonna say uh, i is greater than zero and then i minus minus. And this is probably different than most for loops that you've made in the past, which is usually i equals zero, and then you're looping through i plus plus. But since we're looping through it backwards, this is what we get. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create a random integer. So rand index is what we're gonna call it. And then we're gonna round it down. And then I'm gonna put inside of here math.random. And we are going to multiply, I'm gonna explain this in a second. We're gonna multiply this by i plus one. Okay, so why are we doing that? <laughs> um, the reason why is because it has to be bigger than i um, or equal. Well, no, I'm sorry, I, I don't wanna, I messed that up. So what we're doing, the reason why we're doing it this way, it's kind of weird, is math.random creates a random float between zero and one but I think not one inclusive if I'm if I'm correct. So math.random JavaScript, let's just look at it, I'll show you. Um, so it's so it is inclusive of zero, so it creates a number between zero and one, but not one itself. So all the way up to one, but not one. And so what we're gonna do is we're creating that, it's like you know, 0 0.67, for instance. And then we're taking i, whatever we're on, say uh, four, 
and we're making that five and we're saying uh, 0 0.63 times five, whatever that is, and then we're rounding it down. And that's gonna give us what we're, what we're wanting. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, so now that we have that, we're gonna, we're, by the way, we're using um, uh, CSS grid. So there is a property of the CSS grid called order. And so we're not gonna shuffle the array itself. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna shuffle the order of the cards that are being, the way it's being displayed. So we're gonna use the order property to do that. So following the algorithm, um, we are going to say cards array dot, or let me put in here, random index um, dot style dot order. And so dot style because it's CSS and then dot order because it's the property that we're using in CSS. Um, and we're gonna set that equal to I because it's a number. The, the order is literally like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, and so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're doing exactly what this is saying. Um, there's two lines to this and I'll show you. Cards array, so this dot cards array. And then we're gonna say I dot style dot order is equal to random index, okay? So clearly what we're doing here is we are taking the random um, item, we're taking a random item in the cards list, and then we're taking the card that we're on in the cards list, and we are just swapping the CSS grid order. So we are effectively performing the algorithm just as it is here. So that is a shuffle algorithm. Hope you guys uh, learned something there. Okay, so now that we have that, let's test it. In order to test it, we have to call it, and I think the best place to call it is gonna be inside of the start game function. Um, yeah, so let's put it in there. All right, so save it, refresh. Let's see if we get any errors. We do have an error. What do we got? Random index is not defined, and that's because I called it rand index, not random index. So let's just forget that ever happened. All right, refresh. Any errors? Nope. All right, let's see if it's shuffled. Let's start flipping some cards. That looks like a shuffled deck of cards. Cool. All right, so now we have the cards shuffled. Great. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to, um, we're gonna wanna shuffle the cards, but let's see, what do we wanna do? We wanna start the countdown. Uh, we wanna start the background music. Um, and we wanna set busy to false on the start game. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a timeout. Okay, so the way that this works is it takes a function as the first parameter, and the second parameter it takes milliseconds, and we're gonna put 500 here. And it's what this is saying is wait 500 milliseconds before doing whatever's in this function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this dot audio controller dot start music and we're gonna say this dot shuffle cards. And then we're gonna say this dot countdown. So we're creating this now equals to this dot start countdown, which we don't have yet. So we're gonna do that in just a second. And we're gonna set this dot busy equal to false. And the reason why we're doing this uh, half a second timeout is because when you have like a game over or a, um, a victory and you start the game, it just it's it goes smoother like that with a little bit of a delay. It's a video game, so controlling the time is actually um, important. So in a normal app, you wouldn't do that is what I'm getting at. Um, so this dot hide cards is going to be a function that we have. And then we're going to say this dot timer dot inner text equal to this dot time remaining. And then this dot ticker dot inner text is equal to this dot total clicks. So again, what we're doing here is we are resetting um, the ticker and the timer inner texts here once we start a new game. That's what we're doing there. So let's go ahead and create our this dot hide cards function. So all that's gonna, ooh. 
So all that's going to be is it's we're going to just loop through the cards array. We're going to say this dot cards array, and we're going to say dot for each. And then we talked about for each earlier, so I think you understand what this is doing. So for each card, we're going to say card dot class list dot remove. Ooh. We're going to remove a couple classes. We're going to remove visible, and we're also going to remove. We're also going to remove matched, and so matched is a class that's going to give it a little animation. When you match two cards, it's going to be like this pretty cool animation that um, Web Dev Simplified made for us. So go ahead and save that. Now what we're going to do is uh, actually really quick. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a game over function. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is so I can demonstrate the game over screen. We're going to clear interval, and what that means is this. Uh, I'll show you this dot count down. I think that let's let's make it this dot count down with camel case. So where is the original one? Here it is. Okay, let's make that camel case. All right, so we're gonna say um, this dot countdown. So when we set that up here, when we set this dot countdown equals this dot start countdown, which let's go ahead and probably need to. We're gonna put all of these camel cases because it's it, that's the convention that um, JavaScript developers use. So we're gonna do that. Um, so the the uh, start countdown function, what we're going to do in there is we're going to create a countdown. And let's just go ahead and create that really quick. I know we've got a couple empty functions and we're kind of halfway through a couple things at once, but let's just go ahead and knock this part out really quick since it's easy and will give us the ability to demonstrate a couple of things. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to return, since it's saying this dot total, this dot countdown is equal to it, we're going to return a countdown. And it's going to be an interval. And the way that the interval works is somewhat similar to the um, the uh, set timeout function, except it's the time. Uh, what it does is say you give it 500 milliseconds, it calls the function inside of it every 500 milliseconds. So that is how that works. So we'll go ahead and create a function. And then in this case, we're actually gonna wanna call it every 1000 milliseconds because that's one second. And since it's a timer that's counting down, that makes sense, right? So we're gonna say this dot time remaining minus minus. So we're taking time remaining and minusing it by one every second. And then we're gonna update the uh, <laughs> hold on. Sorry. Uh, then we're gonna update the time remaining value itself on the HTML page. And then we're going to say if this dot time remaining is equal to zero. Well, then we have a game over. So this dot game over. All right. So that's how we're going to check for game over is if the timer runs out, then we know we have a game over. All right. So now in the game over function, we're going to clear the countdown. So the countdown is going to stop counting down. The time will stop going down and we're going to reset the time um, timer in the start game function every time we start a new game. So let's go ahead and um, let's see. Let's finish the game over function really quick. This audio controller dot game over, uh -huh. and then the last thing that we're gonna want to do here is say document dot get element by ID, and that's gonna be I think it's game over text game over text, and we're gonna set the class. We're going to say class list dot add, and we're going to give it the visible class so that the um, game over screen pops up. And so what will happen is it clears the countdown. It's going to play the game over sound, and the game over screen is going to pop up. So let's test this out. But instead of waiting an entire 100 seconds, let's just give it like, let's say, five seconds here in the constructor and save it. And all right, let's see what happens. Looks great, huh? All right. And then you, as you can see, clicking it restarts the game, which is what we would hope. For. So back to putting this to 100. 
let's go ahead and since we're over here, create the victory function. So inside the victory function, we're also going to whoops, clear the interval. Oh my gosh, I can't spell um, this dot countdown because we want it to stop counting down. Uh, this dot audio controller dot victory, and then we're also going to do the same thing with the uh, victory text that we did with the game over text. So the uh, the only difference here is the class name, and we're going to say victory text. That's the class name. And so now we have our game over and our victory function. Now, let's start matching some cards. All right. So what we're going to do is inside of the flip card function, the first thing we need to do is decide, are we trying to match a card right now? Or are we flipping a card for the first time? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, if this dot card to check. So if that if this dot card to check is not null, that's what this is going to return. Um, then we want to go ahead and check for a match. So we're going to say check for match, and then else. Um, then we're so at this point it's saying so if this dot card to check is null then we're going to go ahead and set whatever card we just flipped equal to card to check. So we're going to say this dot card to check is equal to card. Okay. So now what we have to do is quickly create a check for card match function. It's going to take a card. And so now we can go ahead and call that really quick over here. This dot card uh, check for card match. Go ahead and pass it the card. Cool. So now our flip card function should be complete. Um, I think so. So let's go ahead and do our check for card match. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if, and before we do this, we need one other function. And that's going to be called get card type. Okay. And it's going to take, of course, a card. Oh, gosh. All right. So we're going to return a string. It's going to be the type of the card it is. Now let's go over to the index.html so you can see what it is we're returning. So we're actually going to be returning this source attribute for the image on the front of the card. So it'll be this whole thing, assets slash images slash bat.ping. And you'll know that that's a bat. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if that, for instance, say you flip the first two cards here and they're not shuffled. If this is equal to this, which in this case, it's both bats, then we know we have a match. So that's what we're going to do to check for a match. We're going to say return. Uh, for this, we're going to first create this get um, card type, which is, like I said, just going to return this. So let's grab it. Uh, card dot get elements by class name. And then the class that we're um, pulling from is called card value. And it's going to be zero because there's only one. Oops. So again, let's go over this really quick. So card value, right? So the card itself is this huge block here. And we're saying we're grabbing the card value class from, from inside of this card, which happens to just simply be this. And then we're grabbing that one, which is the zeroth index, since there's only one. And then we're grabbing the source attribute. And we're returning that. And so inside of the check for card match function, we're going to say if this dot get card type for card, if that is equal to this dot get card type for uh, this dot card to check. So in other words, if the card that we just clicked is equal to the card to check the source attributes, then we know that we have a match. So we're going to say, we'll go ahead and say match. And then we'll just say else, we'll have a mismatch, which will be its own function. Go ahead and just uh, call them, even though they don't exist yet. <laughs> this dot card match, obviously, <sighs> just card match. There we go. And then we're gonna pass the card, and then let's just let's call this card mismatch, and pass it the card as well. So let's create both of these functions really quick. Let's create card match, and it takes a card. 
and then let's create card mismatch and it takes a card as well cool so in the card match function what we're going to do is when we match a card the first thing we're going to want to do is push both of those cards uh, to the um, matched cards array so this dot matched cards dot push and card match actually is going to take two cards. I apologize. It's going to take card one and card two. And in our case, we're going to pass card and this dot card to check. And that goes with the card mismatch as well. Okay. Fantastic. So we're going to push card one and we're also going to push card two. So just change the two there. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to say card one dot class list dot whoops add. Um, we're going to add the matched class matched. And like I said, that's going to give it the um, that little animation that Web Dev Simplified did for us. So we have card one and card two adding the matched class. Then we're going to want to do the audio controller dot match. So it gives us a nice ding sound which we'll demonstrate in just a second and then we're going to check for a victory we're going to say nah, we don't need that all right we're going to say if this dot matched cards dot length is equal to this dot cards array so in other words if the length of the matched cards array is equal to the amount of cards that we have then we know that all of the cards in the cards array are also inside of the matched cards array and we therefore have matched every card and we have a victory so we will call this dot victory all right let's see if we get a matching sound and all that that's hilarious give it a second okay now let's try <laughs> That's because of that timeout. We'll, we'll take care of that in a second. We haven't set the busy function, I think, for it. Okay. You heard, a, you heard a match there. Okay, so there's a couple things wrong. Um, first thing that is wrong is we don't have the card mismatch function. That's the very first thing that's wrong. So we're going to go ahead and start by saying this.busy is equal to true. And I'll explain why we're doing that in a second. It'll make perfect sense. And then here we're going to put 1000 milliseconds because we're going to want to wait a second. All right, so what are we doing here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say card1.classList.remove. This is if we have a mismatch, by the way. Remove visible. And we're going to do the same thing for card2. And so we're going to flip the cards back so that they have to guess again, right? So if you get two cards that are matched, you want them to stay flipped up facing you. If you get two cards and they don't match you want them to flip back over however what you don't want to do is you don't want to flip them back instantly you want to give the viewer the person who's playing the game a good second to sort of let it sink into their brain that it's in those positions because if you don't then it's going to be really hard for them to play this game so you want to give them this sort of second to visually see it and let it sink into their brain a little bit so what we're doing is we're setting busy to true so now you can't you can click everywhere and it's not going to let you flip a card and then after one whole second it'll flip the cards back over and say we're not busy anymore so we'll save that and then there was another problem and we're going to try to figure out what that is well i can tell you right now one big the the biggest problem that i noticed was that i was clicking on here i'll just show you at the end of check for card match once you do all of that, you want to go ahead and say this dot ch card to check is equal to null. Because no matter what, if you have a card match or if you have a card mismatch, either way, this dot card to check has to be null at that point anyway. So we're going to go ahead and set it there so we don't have to put it in two different functions. The other thing that I noticed was that if, if I refresh, so make sure I'm saved. If I refresh and just click a card really quick, it's, watch. Hold on, let's try it again. Oh, it looks like I got it. Whoa. I think I, I think I fixed it inadvertently. Nope, there it is. So if I click it really fast, what ends up happening is um, since the shuffle is happening while, so I click this, the shuffle is still happening and I click on a card and then it shuffles. So it ends up moving the wrong card because it's shuffled afterwards. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> so what we're going to do is 
What's a good way to handle this, guys? I think I know a good way to handle this. Um, so this dot busy is true. Ah, that's what it is. We're return we're returning true every single time, no matter what. How silly of me. Okay, so we uncomment that line, and if I refresh, we should have. Yep, it will not let me flip a card until. Fantastic. Okay, so let's see what happens when we match two cards. Okay, we have a mismatch there, and we got an error in the console. Oh. Come on. <laughs> All right. Card one is not defined, so script 98. It looks like I just passed the wrong parameters. Passing both, so let's refresh. Try it again. Okay, that looks great. And I'm clicking over here, it's not letting me flip cards until the animation is complete. Okay, so now I flipped this. It's not counting it as a flip, it's not iterating it up. So that's that's good, that's the behavior we would expect. Okay, let's try to get a match. I wasn't paying attention. So now we have a match, it made the match sound, and now the bats are animated. Sorry if I do really bad, guys. I'm on the spot here. Okay, so it looks like we didn't get a victory. Let's see why. basically done we just got to figure out why a victory didn't call did I, am i not calling it no we're calling it here if this dot match cards dot length oh i forgot to put dot length here haha -ha. so we want to check if this dot match cards dot length is equal to this dot cards array dot length not this dot cards array let's try this again sorry guys i should have came up with a way to make it easier to uh <laughs> make it all the way through the game Looks like you get to watch me play a little bit. Maybe you can try to beat my score. Ooh, I forgot where that eye was. Is it here? Yeah. Okay, we kinda won. What happened here? I don't wanna have to go through all of that again. Uh, this dot victory dot play is not a function. That's silly of me. 26, we gotta get rid of all these silly mistakes. So it's not supposed to be this dot victory dot play. It's supposed to be this dot victory sound dot play. And so I think, I wanna say we have a finished product at this point. I'm pretty confident. We might be we might be missing a line or something somewhere. That's why I want to just quickly play it really quick. I'm sorry, you gotta watch me play this game three times. Where was that? Was it here? Nope. That's right. I should have created a way to make it easier to uh, demonstrate this part. Fantastic. I think the the last thing that we're going to want to do, which I'm not going to go through and play the whole game again just to demonstrate it, um, is once we do have a victory and we click this dot start game, the um, actually would it be this dot start game? No, we would want in the victory function. I think what we want to do is call um, what you can do if you would like to, if it would look better to you. See how these cards are all still flipped up facing me. 
you may want the cards to flip over. So when you have a victory or a game over, maybe all the cards flip over. Well, we conveniently have this hide cards function here. So you can call this on victory or game over. And so if you if you say, you know, in the victory function, if you say, you know, this dot hide cards, then that will happen. So you can do whatever you want with the code at this point. You can have fun with it, customize it, do anything you want. Let's just make sure that when I click this, that the time and the flips reset. And if we if it does, then we are good to go. We are good to go. Fantastic. That was an awesome tutorial, guys. I had a really good time with this one with um, Web Dev Simplified. We had a really good time coming up with the idea. And um, if this is something that you enjoyed doing, if you enjoyed getting his perspective for the CSS and HTML and getting my perspective from the JavaScript side, if you would like to see more of these kind of tutorials, just let us know. And I think we may be um, able to hook you guys up with some more of these kind of tutorials. Um, thank you guys very much. I am um, going to be releasing a JavaScript tutorial series. It's actually going to be a full course. And I just wanted to go through a couple things really quick. The full course is going to be completely free on YouTube. And I will be um, creating a Patreon page if you would like to support me. That's only if you would like to. I would really appreciate it if you did because then I'd be able to focus more on this and be able to help you guys get better at programming. Now, all of my coursework and all of the videos that I make, for as far as I can tell right now, are definitely always going to stay free. And I'm gonna to try to rely on YouTube um, and Patreon in order to hopefully make this monetized and kind of be worth my time, so to, so to say because I love making these tutorials for you guys and it looks like you guys really enjoy them. And so just let me know if um, there's any other tutorials that you guys need and uh, you guys have a great day.